This is an explanation of the center of gravity or the center of mass <coughs> uh, for use in animation. Um, essentially, one of the things I frequently see animators uh, missing the point of is uh, the center of mass on something. So, for example, this remote, the center of mass is, let's find it. You can tell by the center of mass because you should be able to put a point through it. It's going to be in there, right in there. And the reason for the center of the mass being there is at this end it's slightly heavier because it has batteries in it. Uh, I can show you a few other examples of why it's important to know about center of mass. So let's say, for example, we have a glass of water filled up to this level, sitting at the edge of a table like this. Now the center of mass for this glass of water is probably quite low because it's not filled up very high. It could be maybe about here. But this center of mass is sitting on this side of the table. So it's not going to fall off. Uh, now something else. So as this uh, glass reaches the edge of the table, where the center of mass is still here, that center of mass is now over the edge of the table and it's going to fall off. So you need to think about carefully where the center of mass is on any given object at any time um, to work out whether it's sitting squarely um, where, it, where it's sitting. So here's another example. Now the reason I use the glass partially, glass partially full example is because another thing to bear in mind is that the center of mass changes. So when the water was at this level, your center of mass may have been here. But as it fills up, that mass changes. So let's say the height is now all the way up here. The center of mass is going to be just about here. It kind of depends on the glass, of course. I mean, if the glass is a heavy base like this, then it, that will lower the center of mass. Um, but essentially, you're looking at the middle of a volume, considering that that volume is a consistent volume, like water, for example. Um, so anyway, the point of the matter is the center of mass rises as the glass uh, is filled up. Uh, now, another example of changing mass might be a human character. So let's say we have a stick man like this. And his center of mass, frequently in a human being, it's somewhere around the hips and lower body. So we're going to say that perhaps his center of mass is there. So that's the point at which if I was to pinch him and he was a little man, he could freely spin around that point and he wouldn't tip in any particular direction because um, that was his center of mass that I'd gotten hold of. If I'd grabbed his up here, and obviously his lower body would drop down. If I grabbed down here, then obviously his upper body would drop down if I was holding it. So basically his center of mass is here. Now, one of the things that happens and people don't take account of in animation is that um, the center of mass can change as the pose changes. So now let's say our stick figure is doing this. If he holds this position, his center of mass is actually outside of his body. It could be about here somewhere. Now, in this particular example, he's probably fine because uh, the, his base is here and here, and that's either side of his center of mass, so he's still got a square footing. On the other hand, that's a good example. Let's say our stick man does this. His center of mass is now probably about here, but his base is here, which means that if he holds this pose, he's going to fall over, if that makes any sense. So that's when, obviously, he's going to want to plant his foot over here 
and he won't fall over. But the reason for this is um, that it's it's really easy for a viewer to look at something and feel like it's off balance just because everybody's inherently aware of the center of mass. And so um, we know when something looks like it's going to fall over, but we might not know specifically why it's actually um, wrong. We just know that it looks wrong. So when, for example, you have a character, let's have a look. Um, if we have a character whose body looks something like this, like our characters, and he sits on a shape like this. Now, at the moment, his center of mass is probably about here. And that center of mass is sitting on the edge of a sloped surface, rounded, chances are it's going to fall like that. So when you're looking to put the center of mass in a squarely, squarely on the object that he's sitting in, then you kind of want to push him back further into the chair so that his center of mass is over, over the chair. Um, now, I actually have some other examples I want to give this on the rig and uh, a new feature I've added to the devil rig. So a common problem is um, on the wrists. Essentially what you have here is that if you rotate the wrist like this, then you also rotate the entire wand from the wrist. And the trouble is, the center of mass for this wand, this whole arm now, is further up. Instead of it being down in the hand, in the palm, it's now up here in the middle of the wand. But when it's animated by translation and rotation from the wrist, you lose a sense of the weight. And all that happens is you kind of look at the animation and it looks like it's uh, the one is a piece of cardboard it doesn't seem to feel like it has any weight so I've added some extra features to uh, both the FK and the IK versions of the wrists and I'm going to show them to you here so this is the FK wrist and this is the IK wrist this is what they look like normally but if you um, go to the channel control editor at the bottom of the channel if I just bring it over here uh, you can click on this extra value which switches on another controller. Now this controller is essentially above this controller in the hierarchy and what it will allow you to do is pivot from a different position. Now let me just show you exactly how to set this up. Um, it's an either-or situation in that what you, you should probably do is if you know you're going to be holding a one throughout your shot, you should start out animating this controller rather than this controller. But if you have started animating with con this controller, you can certainly copy all your animation curves from this one over to this one. But what um, you would do is you'd zero this one out, so go over to the channel box and tap in zero on all the values on that. And then what you'll notice is that the two controllers sit on top of each other. But what you're interested in doing is use the center pivot controller to put it roughly where you want it in space. Then use the wrist controller to pull it back until you've positioned the center pivot controller in the middle where you think the pivot center of gravity would be, which is right here. So there, I've now positioned that. Now, use this controller, and voila, the entire arm and the wand moves around the center of gravity rather than the wrist. You can still use the wrist at this point, except that what you're going to notice is that it moves away from that center pivot controller. So ideally, try to use this controller from this point onwards. And as I said, you can copy your animation curves from this to this. And uh, obviously what's going to happen is that all your pivots are going to look slightly different. The one will appear to have more weight, but you might need to tweak 
the uh, elbows and arms uh, to give you exactly the result that you're looking for. Now over on the FK hand, it's a similar kind of setup, it works except that it works slightly differently because it's not IK. So you can still use the FK controls to move everything around. And once again though, that's going to move it outside of the area that you've set up for this. But now, and so hang on, remember the channel box over here, go to the wrist controller and switch on that controller there. And then you can move this around the center of gravity for that wand. Like that. Okay. And that's that.